What's happening good people? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be comparing two affordable field watchers. On the left we have the Cooper Pathfinder and on the right we have the Loris Titanium Field Watch. So what I'm going to do is do a little rundown between these and see which one is better value for money. So what I'm going to do is kick off with the first category which is the design and as you can see both of them score a respectable seven so kicking off with the cooper you can actually see this is based roughly on a g10 style field watch and if you've not seen g10s then just you know give them a quick google but this is what a g10 uh, field watch looks like it's really clean really legible uh, you can see that with the uh, you know train track minute track um the handset uh, how the numerals are laid out and also the arrows uh, for your markers as well. It is a typical G10, especially with the K shape and uh, the style of it. Everything just looks like a G10 and I think it's one of the uh, nicest looking field watchers in my opinion. Uh, definitely uh, functional but looks great too. Then we get to the Loris which again scores a 7. Now I would have scored this a little bit higher with it being a more original design and not sort of a, a homage uh, if you will to anything. But there is one reason why uh, it scored a little bit lower than that. But I do like this one. I like the contrast between uh, you know the titanium finish and the cream dial. I think it's a really nice uh, contrast and it looks great. I also like how the black contrasts against the cream as well. It makes it really nice and legible. The hands are also accented as well, which again just makes them a little bit more easy to read. The reason why this doesn't score as well is because of the polished second hand. I really don't know why they didn't go with a black one or a, a like a more titanium uh, sandblasted looking one just to match the case a little bit better because the polished one just sticks out like a sore thumb uh, as does the crown that's another reason why it didn't score an eight instead of a seven it's because it's high polish and again it just sticks out too much but not in a good way so that's the reason why this one didn't score as good uh, despite it being you know a little bit more original looking Next up is build and finish and as you can see the uh, Cooper wins again and the reason why the Cooper wins again is because it just uh, feels like a much better put together watch it feels more solid it feels more robust the crown feels better it feels more uh, more solid and more uh, you know well refined and it just feels like a much better put together watch than the Loris. Now the Loris has one disadvantage of it being titanium which can feel like it's cheap even though technically it's not uh, titanium does have that air about it that makes it feel a little bit flimsier even though it is a very strong and solid body it's, it just doesn't have that same heft as stainless steel. Uh, the reason why this one didn't score as high is because, um, yeah, it, the crown, again, it's not that well uh, done. Uh, not only is it high polish, which doesn't look great, uh, it just doesn't feel as you know well set and uh, as robust as uh, the Coopers does. It feels a little bit flimsy in comparison. So yeah, that's why it doesn't score quite as highly like, as the Cooper does. So next round is the strap and the Cooper takes it again. We'll actually talk about the Loris first and the reason why the Loris scored so badly here is well the finishing you can see uh, it's starting to come away a little bit and I've only had this watch just over a week but the reason why it scores so badly is the fabric. It is so so itchy on your wrist. It is horrible feeling. I'll talk more about that um, in comfort as well, but yeah, just the material, it just feels really cheap and uh, horrible feeling. Again, you know, it's, a, it's an affordable watch, so it's not going to have an amazing strap, but they definitely could have done with a little bit better material or just completely gone with a different strap altogether. Uh, now, the uh, Cooper has a, a pretty standard NATO, but again, this one doesn't score as good as it could uh, because of the adjustment holes not having any heat treat in, no heat treatment on the end, uh, mismatching hardware doesn't match the case, they should have gone with sandblasting because again it just contrasts but not in a good way. And we've also got some uh, issues as well which you'll see in my review, got a few little QC issues with the uh, stitching on it so that's why it doesn't score quite as good as it perhaps should. Next up is comfort and the Cooper takes it again with a strong eight. Now this is really a comfortable watch, it's lightweight. The strap is actually soft, even though it's not well made, it's actually soft and it does feel really nice against your skin. And because the watch is lightweight, 
you know, it's one of them watches you can put on and you can forget that you're wearing it. It really is, you know, that nice to wear on wrist. So yeah, definitely a comfortable watch to wear. And of course, if you don't like nails, you can always, you know, swap it out for something else. The Loris really falls down in this apart, like I mentioned already, the strap is so itchy and it is really, really uncomfortable. I can wear this for two hours and then I want to take it off because it's that irritating. And it's even worse with this current heat wave that we're having because your, your wrist gets really sweaty and really agitated uh, and it ends up being all red and itchy. So yeah, the strap, not that good at all. So I thought four was pretty fair for that. So yeah, that's why yeah, it doesn't score that well in this uh, category. Then we get on to the Loom, and uh, the Cooper does actually score a little bit better here. Uh, not only is there more Loom on the Cooper watch, it's actually better Loom as well. It's brighter and it does last longer, which is good. Uh, the Loris Loom is is not bad. It's uh, not as good as the Loomy Bright version of this, which has got a fully Loom dial. So that would have definitely won uh, this category. But this one just has uh, Loomed hands. And yeah, it's not that great in low light. So yeah, that's why it doesn't score as good. It doesn't get as bright and it doesn't last all that long. So that's why it only gets a five. Next up is the movement, and actually Cooper takes a surprising win. Uh, now the uh, Loris is using a Seiko VX42, which you think, oh right, it's Seiko movement, really good. Well, uh, the specs for that is negative tw uh, 20 to plus 20 seconds per month, but the Cooper has it beat. It also beats it in the battery department as well. That has three years battery. The Cooper beats it. Uh, it has a four year battery life and also is more accurate at negative to plus 15 seconds per month. Uh, this actually uses a Myota Super to, uh, 2035 movement. Uh, so the movement in this is uh, the both quartz movements, but this one is a little bit better. It's more accurate and it lasts longer as well. It's actually a higher price movement as well, which is uh, something I wasn't expecting at this price point. But it's really nice to see that they've gone for a really good quartz movement. Uh, you know, it hits its markers as it should. Again, it's really accurate. It feels fantastic when you're actually using it. The Loris, again, you know, it does feel really great. The only reason why it didn't score as good is because the Myota movement in the Cooper does has better specifications. That is the only reason why. Uh, this one's really accurate as well, but the Cooper just, just beats it. It's just as simple as that. It just beats it on specifications. Next up is water resistance. And both of these have got the uh, the same water resistance of 100 meters. So yeah, that's why they both scored six. Uh, I'd be probably comfortable, uh, you know, uh, getting these wet. I probably wouldn't go diving with either of them because, you know, they're not uh, dive watches. But it's nice that both have got 100 meters. So next up is the availability. And unfortunately, the Loris uh, doesn't score that well here. And the reason is, I think it's been discontinued. So it's not really a fair comparison. If I'd have done this, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, then the scoring would have been very similar. Uh, but the Loris now, like I said, it's really hard to come by. You can buy it used, but only when they come up. Uh, places like Argos, uh, Amazon, don't really tend to get them in stock that often either, which is why it doesn't score very much. Even though I think they're still technically... I don't know if they're still making them or not. I'm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I think they should uh, maybe do an updated version because uh, I think it's a really good watch. It just needs a few little tweaks. But yeah, that's why it only scores a three. Uh, the Cooper is actually available from Cooper directly. And there's also a couple of sellers on AliExpress that sell that watch as well. So next up is the brand. And actually, uh, the Loris scores a little bit better here. And the reason why that is because, well, Loris is just a more popular name. It's been around longer. I think it's actually owned by Seiko. Uh, now, uh, so you've got that as well. So you know that it's you know it's got that heritage behind it. Whereas Cooper, you know, they're a newer brand. Yeah, they've made a good name for themselves, making really good quality watches. But I think Loris, you know, if you're told, if you ask someone, have you heard of a Cooper? They might say mm, probably not. Whereas Loris, they might be more inclined to have heard it. But the name doesn't really matter. But if it does to you, then Loris is you know. A little bit more well established is uh, what I'm trying to get out. So next up and finally is price and value. Uh, now, 
Sellers of these, um, if you buy them new on eBay, I've seen they've really marked the price up. Uh, the last time I saw this for sale on Amazon, it was £40. And if you could actually get it for that, then it would have walked away with this category. But at the minute, you, you can't buy them for that much. Uh, even used, they sell for around £40. So, yeah, they're not really that that great to be fair if you can buy them at their retail price then obviously that score would be much better but you can't it's, it's just uh, unfortunate the cooper is 55 pound brand new from cooper direct and i think that is a fantastic value for this watch uh, yeah it's well built it's well uh, thing uh, it looks nice a uh, couple of little letdowns but it's overall a really good watch so Taking a look at the numbers, you can see the Cooper does win with a 64.5 to a 50.5 for the Loris. So, in my opinion, the Cooper is a better value field watch. Uh, it's just better made. I think it looks equally as nice, but it, it just tops it in, uh, you know, places like Loom and other things that are important as well. It, it just, it's just that little bit better in every category, which is why it takes the win uh, this time round. So that is pretty much it for this one. I mean, if you can get the uh, Loris for pretty cheap, then it is a really good field watch, super lightweight. Definitely swap out that strap though. It's, uh, it's not very good. But yeah, really happy with both of these watches. So yeah, uh, you'll be seeing uh, more of these in more comparison videos coming up very soon. So definitely hit that subscribe button uh, to see that. See if the Cooper can win uh, its next roundup, which is uh, against a Seiko. Uh, so that will be a very, very interesting one. And the Loris will be facing the same Seiko as well. So that will uh, be a pretty interesting battle. So that is pretty much it for this one. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed. And I will see you soon.